The Netherlands has been called the happiest place on earth and right here in the capital Amsterdam, it's not hard to see why. There are glamorous people on old fashioned push bikes tootling across quaint canals and down tiny cobblestone laneways between these magnificent old merchant buildings. There's the smell of baristered coffee and fresh bakery everywhere and everybody talks as though they're singing the chorus of a pop song. Now why wouldn't you be happy? This charming city is the starting point of our European sojourn with Scenic as we take to one of the world's greatest waterways, the Rhine. Over the next three weeks, we'll journey through the Netherlands into Germany and finish up in the Swiss town of Basel. Long considered the Venice of the North, Amsterdam has been shaped by its intricate system of canals, requiring over 1,200 bridges to link its 90 islands. A leisurely boat cruise on the canals is the best way to get your bearings and I'm being joined on mine by local scenic guide Mario Borst. It's an incredibly beautiful city because of these canals. How old typically are these merchant buildings? Wow, that's quite old, you know, because here the canal, it has been built in the 17th century for all those rich merchants. We have already another canal where we will go in now, the Singel. That has been built in the 15th century, so they dug out, because that was at that time the defense right. for the city. Okay. So these were merchants dealing in goods that were traded yes. via sea? Yeah. yeah, via the sea, because Amsterdam was quite an important port at that time, and every boat could come inside the city center. Now, of course, it's not possible anymore, but that was the reason why they built those warehouses and where they, why they built those beautiful houses as well. As far as capital cities go, Amsterdam has an incredibly laid-back vibe, most likely owing to its liberal outlook on drugs and prostitution, as well as its thriving bike culture, with Amsterdam long regarded as one of the most cycle-friendly cities on the planet. There are a lot of bikes, even more bikes than people who are living here are in they? Amsterdam. Yes, they why are. Why is that? Why, why would you need two well, bikes? Because you never know when you park your bike here if you will find it back again. No visit to Amsterdam would be complete without a sample of the local cuisine, a delicacy found on most street corners. If there is such a thing as a national dish, it would be the herring. And if you're going to eat the herring, you've got to do it the Dutch way. Oh, it's an acquired taste. Amsterdam is the kind of place where it would be so easy to wrap yourself in its seductive charms and never bother with the rest of the Netherlands, but you'd be missing this, you'd be missing the, the curious flatlands where sky meets land meets water like nowhere else, the ploughed fields, the, the forests, the occasional spinning windmill like an excited Dutchman waving, and there'd be no better way of seeing it than on board the brand spanking new Scenic Opal as we begin our 14 day luxury meander down one of the mightiest rivers of all, the Rhine. And you can experience its magnificence from all vantage points of the lavishly appointed vessel, including the comfort of your very own royal suite. As if you need proof, luxury is paramount on board. Every conceivable convenience is available at the push of a button. There's air conditioning, two zones, and a bed for any position. And for further fun, there's a disco light in the shower. But for full effect, you might want the lights off. There's a push button window, lets the fresh air in. The fresh air is a little too fresh. There's always the fire. Oh, and of course, the butler. Raphael. Yeah, uh, the lobster thermidor, thanks. Great. 
settle in for the journey because after the break, we're crossing the border into Belgium. It doesn't take long to realise that Bruges is dedicated to some of the finer things in life, like fries, lace, well, romantic lace even. I wonder where you wear that. Chocolate, romantic chocolate. And look at this, God's gift to the thirsty. Beer, miles of it. It's your sin. Welcome back to our glide down the Rhine on board the luxurious scenic opal, where the jaw-dropping scenery just keeps on coming. And if the eye candy along the river leaves you wanting more, each day we find ourselves exploring new territory. Today, we're crossing the border into Belgium and its prized town of Bruges. I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, gee, that's beautiful. Interestingly, Bruges would not be quite so beautiful if it wasn't for a huge pile of muck. This was one of Northern Europe's biggest ports, a major commercial centre until the late 15th century when the river silted up, denying access to the sea. Bruges became redundant virtually overnight. Time, progress, modernisation, the Industrial Revolution all passed it by, but the price they paid was this, a big fat smooch from the Fairy of Beauty. Bruges is built on a network of canals that linked it to the North Sea. And with its grand buildings, unspoiled streets and quaint waterways, it's earned itself a well-deserved reputation as a tourist hub. But even with the throngs of visitors, its charm remains completely intact. Bruges, like Amsterdam, also lays claim to being the Venice of the North. It may share the title on that front, but this traveller's mecca has been dealt much more than just fine physical attributes. It doesn't take long to realise that Bruges is dedicated to some of the finer things in life, like fries, lace, well, romantic lace even. I wonder where you wear that. Chocolate, romantic chocolate. And look at this, God's gift to the thirsty. Beer, miles of it. Hello. Hello. There was something about your chocolate that drew me in. Do you make it yourself? We make it ourselves. What's your specialty? The speci everything is a specialty. <laughs> of course. <laughs> There's a lot of chocolate in Bruges. Yes. Bruges is famous for chocolate. We are known as a uh, chocolate city. Yeah. Uh, it's famous because uh, a lot of, of people make it here. Belgian chocolate is now. Mm. Maybe uh, the one with the in the gold paper here, yeah, one of those. Yes. What's that one called? That's the gold, heart of gold. Heart of gold, that seems appropriate. After our side trip to Belgium, we're back on board the scenic opal, continuing our meander through the Dutch countryside with its sprinkling of centuries old windmills. It's very easy to spend hours up here, gobsmacked by the vista, but you need to keep your wits about you. Beware the low-flying bridge. They do a nice job of keeping it neat underneath, I must admit. Nicely painted. And there we are again. And as the day draws to a lazy close and the mind starts to consider the evening dinner plans, you can rest easy knowing that all of those decisions are taken care of. Thank you. The service here is so amazing. They instinctively know what I want without me even ordering it. And even though we're in dock this evening, the food just keeps on coming. And tonight, it's my privilege to enjoy some fine dining. Portobello's is the Italian fine dining restaurant on board, and every guest has the honour of dining here at least once on the cruise. Buonasera, signore e signori. Bienvenuta a Portobello. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Portobello, our Italian fine dining experience. Tonight, you will experience a different kind of dining. I think I can safely say without a shadow of a doubt, your favorite restaurant doesn't have a view like that. I watched the sun setting on that castle and um, I just said to Annette, we'll never have another view like that at a dinner. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. For guests, it's the perfect end to what is already proving to be the holiday of a lifetime.
I think what they've done, they've under-promised and over-delivered. They've surprised us with just little things that we didn't anticipate. And the fact that you don't have to put your hand in your pocket all the time is a fantastic part of this whole thing. Love it. We're actually on our 50th wedding anniversary. That's why we're here. And, um, yeah, and uh, we wanted something special, and I think this has provided it, wouldn't you say? Join Scenic on an all-inclusive luxury 15-day romantic Rhine and Moselle river cruise between Amsterdam and Basel. Prices start from $7,795 per person, twin share. Book now and fly for free. And just for getaway viewers, visit scenic.com.au forward slash getaway now to get an extra $250 per person off any 2016 Europe river cruise. To book or request a free brochure, visit scenic.com.au or call 138128. After the break, we're in the pretty Dutch town of Vera, where it appears I'm one of the star attractions. <laughs> Look at you. Go on, here you go. Go on. Hey, Ding. <laughs> Welcome aboard the glistening, shiny, brand spanking new scenic opal, guiding us down the Rhine River and delivering us to some of Europe's most glorious towns. Next stop is the Dutch village of Vera. When you're used to the luxury of this, the last thing you're going to want to do is walk. So they've provided you with bikes that you hardly even have to pedal. With electric bikes at our disposal, each new town is ours for the exploring. Whether you choose to go it alone or join a local guide like Nani Durst. That is where I should be. In a town of pretty buildings, Vera's Town Hall is perhaps the fairest of them all, but behind its grand exterior is an ugly past. What are these? That uh, are the stones of law. The stones of law. It was a punishment. If you cheated some, someone, then uh, uh, the offender had to walk around the town with the stones, with the chain around his neck. And the stones are made more heavy because iron is in it. Yep. This is the colors of fear, white and black. And this was another punishment, this stock. Um, a stock. A stock. Yeah. We call it a stock. And uh, the criminal was put on view here. But here you see the stopped holes. Yeah. And then uh, there was a chain around the offender's neck. And the public could throw stones or sp spit upon him. Spit? Yeah, spit. <laughs> Lovely. Yes. yes. The good people of Veer spitting on their criminals. The good old days again. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> The town's wealth stems from its role in the wool trade back in the 1600s, and its elegant architecture and seaside location draw up to four million visitors a year. The man here has challenged me to eat a herring. I've told him I've already done it, but he said, you cannot deny a Dutchman who's offering to buy you a free herring. OK, I'll show him. Beautiful, Very thank good. you. I've got to do it Take the Dutch it. way, yeah? Which is like this. Correct? Right. Down. <laughs> Look at you. Go on, here you go. Go on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got some? <laughs> it's like feeding a pet. <laughs> And of course, what would a town in Holland be without its iconic windmill? That is the typical Dutch icon, isn't it? Yes, it is. And are they crumbling? Are they restoring them? They are restoring them, yeah. The, the government gives money to restore mills because That's... it's our national heritage. Yeah. We have actually a saying, when somebody's not very smart, they say, we say here, maybe he received a blow from a wing from a windmill. <laughs> Back on board and the ship's jam-packed entertainment program has been carefully selected to reflect the area we're travelling through. So, today we're treated to a clog dancing performance. And for a further infusion of Dutch culture, we have a choice of three local restaurants to dine in. All inclusive, of course. 
I've selected the West Harb for its very unique location on a dike surrounded by the sea on three sides. Not all meals are taken on board, so tonight some of us have opted for this little restaurant on the westernmost tip of the Netherlands, Belgium, just there, and the UK on the other side of the North Sea. With a full belly of fresh seafood, it's back to our luxury digs on the water to sail through more postcard scenery as the scenic opal delivers us to yet another day of European gloriousness. Every sun dappled bend in this river, every grand bridge, every lush field we glide past reveals yet another moment that slackens the jaw and quickens the pulse. Castles, medieval townships, fairy tale vistas, you really do start to believe you're one of the chosen few. As we edge ever closer to Germany on our luxurious 15-day European river cruise with Scenic, today we found ourselves in the fascinating city of Nijmegen. This is thought to be the oldest city in the Netherlands. The Romans had a military camp here way back in the first century. Nijmegen's connection to warfare certainly didn't end there. With the German border just seven k's away, this was the first Dutch city to be invaded by the Nazis in the Second World War. The Airborne Museum now stands in honour of the area's bloodied history and the airborne operation that took place here. It's interesting that they've chosen to recreate their bleak wartime history right here. This was where German field marshal models stayed before moving just across the field. Bizarrely, not long after, this became the headquarters for the British 1st Airborne Division. They didn't even realise enemies separated by just a field. Its interactive exhibits and wartime relics tell the story of this area's darkest hours. I'd like you to tell the commanding officers come here at 10 o'clock to get their orders. Tired of fighting, the wartime horrors didn't end there. Nijmegen here was bombed by the Americans in the Second World War who mistook it for a city just across the border in Germany. Surely all that tragedy is enough to drive a man to drink. And perhaps that's why this city has more pubs per square metre than any other in the Netherlands. Despite having many of its finest historic buildings destroyed in the war, the city still has some impressive structures to gaze at whilst enjoying its many watering holes. Back on board and more cruising downstream brings us to another highlight spot on the tour, Maastricht, located on a finger of land still sandwiched between Belgium and Germany. Maastricht, by way of the Maastricht Treaty, is the birthplace of the EU, of the single currency euro, of that fine border dissolving idea of European citizenship. I'm sure there's some dry, droll political explanation as to why that all began here, but have a look around. Damn, this is one glorious joint. They're big on food, wine, elegance, ceremony, the joy of life. If you wanted the EU to have a heart and soul, why wouldn't you want it to start here? The good people of Maastricht seem to enjoy the outdoors. Yes, yes, the, the mentality of the people here in Maastricht, the most southern town of the country, is, is very different from the north. People um, enjoy more the good food, the good drinks. We have a word for it, we call it the burgundy way of life. Oh, yeah. They're also more elegantly dressed. Yeah. They are really living, uh, enjoying the outdoors. They say about Maastricht, you know, that people uh, have an 11th commandment, thou shalt enjoy yourselves. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Maastricht appears to be big on good living, with its cafes and restaurants full to bursting. Is there such a thing as a Maastricht dish? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are very famous pie from Maastricht, it's here. What do you call these? Uh, this delicacy, uh, this pie is called a fly. V-L-A-A-I, uh, and it means uh, patty, what a cow drops in a meadow. Oh, you're doing it an <laughs> in injustice. That looks a lot better than that. It tastes much better, yeah. yeah. They are fantastic. The vlei is found in most bakeries in Holland, and they're often eaten on special occasions. However, 
Loitering outside the bakery is a first time at the Maastricht. Seems occasion enough to me. That's, what that's, flavor that's, is this? That's, I think it's apple. Apple with cinnamon. OK, bon appetit. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, is, that is really good, isn't it? Don't think of the word. Huh? You just ruin it. You mean, <laughs> you, mean the, you mean the cow patty? <laughs> oh, that is really good. I find it amazing that you can arrive in a place like Amsterdam or Bruges or Maastricht and you're instantly stopped in your tracks. The, the beauty, the history, the stories these places have to tell are quite often so overwhelming that you wonder how you're going to cope with the pure sensory overload of it all and then, mercy be, you're back on board, perhaps cradled in the medicinal arms of a vodka and tonic and given the opportunity to absorb it all. And comfort does that, it revitalizes, it recharges. And in this case, it reminds you that just below there's a bed of pure delight ready to glide you into the next port of call, Germany, which we'll bring you next week as we glide further down this incredible Rhine River.